Hello, hello, Squarespace friends. I have three updates for you today. The first update is already publicly available to everyone who has a Squarespace website. And uh, the second and third one are currently in beta testing with Circle members. So if you are a Circle member, you should be able to see those updates or you can turn them on in the Circle Labs on your website and uh, they will soon be available to the public as well. So I'm just going to show you everything, you know, that is about to come as well. So the first one is really exciting. Squarespace have now upgraded the reCAPTCHA to version 3. reCAPTCHA is the, uh, you know, is a little widget that is offered by Google to uh, prevent spam, you know, so it's like a spam filter. And in the past with version 2, uh, if you turned on reCAPTCHA, you know, so here is an example, here is a newsletter block. And if you go into the newsletter block settings, uh, go to the storage tab and then Google reCAPTCHA. And this is where you could turn this on or off, you know. So in the past, when we turned this on, it would add this little box below here saying, I'm not a robot. And people had to check that box before they could submit an email address. I never used that because it was so ugly. <laughs> and I don't know, you know, sometimes I choose a design over function, you know, uh, so I never used it. Uh, if you don't have the reCAPTCHA turned on, then it will automatically um, send the confirmation email. So if you're using email campaigns, it will send a confirmation email so that the subscriber has to confirm that they want to be on the list. If you are using reCAPTCHA, you can turn off the confirmation email. So let's do this, you know, let's enable reCAPTCHA and you can see it does not actually add this box now, you know, below our form. And um, and now if I go to my Squarespace uh, mail email settings, I can actually now turn off the confirmation email. So what this means is that if someone enters their email here, they will get immediately added to the mailing list. So they do not have to confirm their subscription. What does this look like to the subscriber? You know, so if they go to a form that has reCAPTCHA enabled, you know, the new reCAPTCHA version 3, uh, as if they click into the email field, you will now see here on the bottom right, it uh, a little pop-up appears. And if you hover over that, you know, then you can go to Google's uh, privacy and terms uh, pages. So that is all that happens. You know, so you, we just have a little you know, pop up here in the corner. Um, so that is really nice, I think. Um, will I start using this now? Maybe on some pages. I actually personally still like the confirmation email because to me, it's a qualifier for the subscriber. This is someone who really wants to be on my mailing list. Uh, I'm all about quality over quantity on my mailing list. Uh, and the other thing is also, you know, if someone gets the confirmation email and they, uh, you know, confirm their subscription that way, uh, it sends basically a message back to the, uh, you know, to the email platform or whatever it is. Uh, I'm not sure about the technical terms here, but it basically tells them, hey, I'm a legit person. So if you now send future emails like newsletters, for instance, uh, they're more likely to end up in that person's inbox instead of ending up in their spam folder or promotions folder. You know, so by basically uh, telling my system, hey, I'm legit, I want to be on this list, uh, you know, my system knows, okay, I can, uh, you know, send this back um, appropriately and uh, their system, well, no, their email system will then recognize my email and say, okay, this is legit, you know, we had an interaction already. I don't know if I explained this very well, but I think you probably know what I mean. Anyway, this is an exciting uh, update from Squarespace. Uh, the next one, remember, this is in Circle Beta at the moment. We can now apply effects to individual images, um, in like, like Parallax, for instance. So we were able to do that already to banner images, and now we can do it on individual images. What does that look like? So here is an image block 
And here now on the design tab, we have image effect. And then you have quite a few that you can choose from here. And uh, now most of them, you know, you can make it grainy, you can do circles or lines. I think what most people will be interested in is the parallax. So let's select the parallax. What this does is it actually zooms the image in a little bit. So let us just save this and uh, let us uh, refresh our page. And if we now go here and now watch this image, it, it now see it moves a little bit. So we have the, you know, the effect that I have on the whole website, you know, so when a page loads, I do have an animation uh, set for that. But now, you know, as I scroll past, you can see it moves a little. Now, what if I want to make that a little stronger? You can customize this as well. That's actually really nice. So if I go back to my image effect now, here I can click on the effect settings. And then if I click on parallax, so the intensity here, I can actually increase that for instance, you know, so let's just put it here. And also the angle, because at the moment it goes kind of sideways a little bit, sideways and up. So if I now go and um, make it a 90 degree angle, then I think I just get the, um, the vertical effect. So let us go back to that. So let me actually see here, zoom starts. So, you know, maybe we put that down to zero. I'm not quite sure what happens with that. I haven't tested that yet, but let's, let's see what happens. And let us just refresh that. And now as we scroll down, and now you can see, now it's a little stronger. And now, you know, we have the vertical um, parallax which is very similar to what we used to have on the 7.0 websites, right? So this is really nice, you know, so you can apply this to any image block. Doesn't work for images in lists or anything like that, not yet anyway. Um, but yeah, I think this is, uh, this is really lovely. The next change is something that you may have noticed as you just watched me edit this page. Uh, we now have an option to save uh, our changes and it won't kick us out of edit mode. Again, you turn this on in the Circle Labs in your website. This is currently only available for Circle members. So let's say I make a change here, you know, just gonna add a space. You can see it now gives me the option to save. So I just click on that and voila, you know, now it has saved it, but it doesn't kick me out of my edit mode so I can actually continue. This is really useful if you're making a lot of changes. It's definitely recommended to save every now and then so that you don't lose anything if something happens. That actually happened to me the other day. Uh, I had a big update. I was creating a new page and I just kind of kept working and working on it. I didn't click save in between because Right now, you know, you have to go, it says done up here, and then you click on that and there's an option to save. But when you do that, it will actually um, exit the save uh, or the, the edit mode, you know, so then you have to go back into edit and that's a little tedious. So uh, it was really windy day and we lost our electricity only for like a second, you know, it immediately came back on, but everything was turned off for a second. So my computer went out, I mean, everything. So I went back to my web page and of course I had lost everything, you know, so I had to redo half an hour of work. So this is really exciting. Um, and, you know, so once you save it, if you then don't make any other changes, then you just click on exit and that will then, um, you know, get you out of edit mode. If you make changes and you don't immediately save it, you know, let's say you just make some small changes, um, you can also go and then click on exit and then you can just say save here or you can exit without saving your changes. So I am really excited about this. I think this is a really good improvement uh, that will help with our workflow. Last but not least, uh, this is um, again a beta for Circle members. And if you are a web designer, then you are likely to have a lot of websites in your account. Or if you are someone like me who doubles a lot or who, you know, just uh, has a lot of stuff always going on um, in our dashboard, you know, these are all our web pages. And in addition to being able to pin them now to the top of our dashboard, which is great, you know, so in your list of websites, you click on these three dots 
And then here you have an option. Okay, this is actually a pin project. So let me go to one that's not pinned. Here you can say pin project and it will pin it to the top. So your most important websites you can always have at the top. You can, we can additionally now also add tags. This is really nice. So here is a new column that says tags and you literally just you know click on that and then you can just select a tag and you can um, click on tag here and this is where you can also add in your tags as well. And then we can just filter by these tags. So we just click on that and apply and voila. And actually, no, this is not where you add a tag. This is where you filter. You go to manage tags and that is where you can add new tags or delete tags as well. Um, but yeah, so now I can filter uh, my websites and uh, this makes just organizing so much easier. <laughs> So anyway, so I hope uh, that you enjoyed this update. Uh, give it a little like if you did and uh, see you next time. Thank you.